Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Today I wanted to come on here and share my updated top 10 luxury wish list items. I did do this video back in February, but since some of the items that I spoke about in that video have been added to the collection, some have moved down the list, some have moved up the list, I have added brand new ones, I figured why not do another updated version. And six months seems like a good enough time, uh, a time frame to, you know, to film a new one. Uh, so kind of like in that video, I shared a picture of it and then I went in depth as to why I have it on my list. So without further further ado, let's get started, shall we? My number one item, the Rolex Datejust 36. I absolutely love this watch. Uh, I have always been a big fan of timepieces, whether they are high-end, low-end, contemporary, what have you. I just absolutely love them. It's one of those types of accessories that I feel very uncomfortable when I don't have it on. I can go without earrings, I can go without bracelets, I can go without necklaces, but before I leave the house, I have to have my watch on. Uh, so I figured, you know, um, let's just put the Rolex on the wish list. Let's go for the jug. Regular. And um, I am really saving up for it for a big birthday of mine. I figure I have plenty of time to save up for it, but I want it to, you know, I want it to be a, a really special, um, a special birthday for me to get a special type of accessory. And uh, I love the Datejust. I've tried it on multiple times at the store and I just, I, you know, it's a little bit larger. I prefer oversized watches. Um, and I particularly like this color combination, uh, but the reason why I haven't pulled the trigger, not only because I want to save it for a big birthday, but because of the price point. Uh, <laughs> I definitely have to save up for it. I have to be very strict, uh, but like I said, I have plenty of time uh, to, to get the funds for it, but I figured, you know what, let's just go for it. If I'm always such a fan of timepieces, I, you know, I love the Cartier Tank watch. That's another watch that I have been wanting to get for quite some time, uh, but I figured now. Nah. Now let's let's go big or go home. Let's go with the Rolex Datejust. So, <laughs> like I said, I won't be getting it anytime soon. I don't think. Um, I really want to commemorate a big birthday for it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of my family members know about it too. They're just like, really? You uh, you're you're gonna go for it? I said, yeah. <laughs> that's what I that's what I want to spend um, you know my money on. Like like I said before, because it is a it is a pretty price point. <laughs> uh, so you won't see it anytime soon but a girl can dream and a girl can keep it on her wish list and I don't foresee it leaving the number one spot anytime soon and usually when it comes to wish list um uh, well, it depends on the person, but sometimes when it comes to wish list, the number one item is the one that you want to go for first, and then second, third, and so forth. But for me, usually I end up putting the most expensive item at the very top, so it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a path, you know, like it, the eyes, my eyes are on the prize, there's the end, the end result, the end prize, but... I can still get distracted along the way. So it's kind of like a ladder, going up the ladder. I don't know. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Uh, so the Rolex Datejust 36, it is gorgeous. And that is the number one. Number two, the Cartier Love Ring in the yellow gold with a five millimeter band. Uh, this item was actually on my previous wish list video and has since moved up the list, uh, especially because I keep talking about it so much. Uh, but my husband and I went down to Cartier a few weeks ago and we tried them on and I really love the way that they look. Uh, but to be honest, the main reason why I'm waiting is because uh, I would like to get it uh, to commemorate a special occasion in our lives, kind of like with the Rolex. Uh, but we have our 10 year wedding anniversary coming up 10 years with this wonderful man uh, so I had thought about you know uh, myself getting him a love ring and he had thought about getting one for for me so that way you know it, it'll have special meaning behind it but to be honest not that we need anything tangible to share our love or to show our love to one another but it's really nice to have a story behind it uh, so not only the meaning of a, of a wedding band or the meaning behind a love ring but the fact that we can get it for a 10 year wedding anniversary for each other I think is awesome Awesome. Uh, so um, I don't know I like I said before we were thinking about getting one for each other uh, although I have a feeling that <laughs> that he might not be so crazy about getting one only because my husband is not a big fan of luxury goods uh, I know he'll sit there and he'll I mean he'll listen to me talk about them but for him it's not really you know something that's like oh let's go shopping for luxury goods he's not that type of guy uh, you know and uh, when I told him about the the love ring he was actually you know he was open to it which I was surprised he said yeah I think it would be great for us to be able to to commemorate our 10-year wedding anniversary so whether that happens or not I don't know but uh, I know he's really been um, 
you know, toying with the idea about getting it for me for our tenure. Number three, the Valentino Rockstead pumps in the nude patent leather with a 100 millimeter heel. All right, so we all know that I talk about being a casual dresser. I prefer to wear sneakers. I prefer to wear uh, sandals, uh, flats, what have you. I never really like to wear heels. It's not really my thing. Uh, but with these Valentino pumps, number one, I can't stop talking about them. Number two, they make my heart sing. And even though I always talk about cost per wear, I talk about uh, anytime I'm looking at buying or uh, adding something that has a pretty price point, I want to make sure that it suits my lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. I always talk about this, right? It's, I mean, it's nothing new. But I also talk about that singing heart, as I mentioned earlier, and I cannot get them out of my head. I cannot. Whether we go to Neiman's, whether we go to Nordstrom, wherever we go, I try them on. I try them on so I figure instead of wasting my time, instead of wasting everyone else's time, just shut up already and buy them. So <laughs> I foresee myself getting them probably within the next couple of weeks, maybe when we go on vacation. But... I will be adding these to my collection at some point in time this year. Uh, I just really, really like them. And the reason why I went for the nude ones is, uh, you know, I did try on the black patent leather. Um, I do like the way that they look, but there's something about the nude that I just, I, I feel I'm a little bit more attracted to. I end up gravitating towards that particular uh, combination the most. Uh, I really like the fact that the nude ends up elongating your legs and making your legs look longer is always a positive, especially if I'm already gonna look taller since I'm wearing heels. So so I figure it's a win-win, um, but yeah, so the nude patent Valentino Rocksteads, for sure, for sure. So uh, I'll be checking those off sometime soon. <laughs> but that way, I could stop giving you guys an earful. My goodness, I talk about them every chance I can, and I post them on Instagram as well. So it's like, really? Really? Just, just go for it already. <laughs> especially since the Givenchy slides didn't work out. So I'm just going to focus on getting the, the pumps, and that is that. Number four, the Chanel reissue 2.55 large flap. Now this bag uh, I have added to my uh, wish list uh, recently, probably within the last couple of weeks. I have done a ton, a ton of research on this. And uh, to be honest, when I do add this item to my collection, if I do add it to my collection, I will be going the pre-loved route. And the main reason I'm gonna go the pre-loved route with the reissue is because unfortunately, when it comes to this bag, it doesn't hold its resale value, which is kind of a shame considering that this is the original design that Coco Chanel had. Uh, so, you know, they don't hold a resale value and considering the price point that they have, I much rather end up going the pre-loved route just in case in the future I decide to, uh, you know, to sell it or maybe it doesn't work out for me and that way I'm not losing that much money uh, because they, uh, you know, they range anywhere from $5,500 to $6,000 depending on the style that you get or $5,000 depending on the style that you get. Uh, but on the pre-loved market, you can find them for $2,500 for, um, you know, 2300 2200 2600 I mean uh, it's almost like half half of the price of, uh, of a brand new one uh, and you know something that I've never really thought about with uh, with the reissue is that a lot of you know that I go for structured bags you know that's that's nothing new either uh, I prefer structured bags but there's something about the age uh, the age calfskin that I really like about the reissue uh, and it might be a little bit you know slouchier as time goes on or as I end up using it or depending on the type of condition that I end up getting through the pre-loved market uh, but I, there's just something that I love about it I love the chain I love the lock closure that it has and you know I just feel that because of the design that it has, because of the history behind the, the bag, it's something that I really appreciate. That's something that I really love. Uh, now, the big question is what type of hardware? I'm thinking maybe I should go with the ruthenium hardware just because I really like the overall look. It kind of reminds me of my Chanel Le Boy bag because it does have the, uh, it does have the calfskin and it does have the ruthenium hardware, so I do like that. But then I think maybe it'll look better with the gold hardware. I don't know. I go back and forth. I haven't decided which one. Uh, but I like the large version uh, just because it's a little bit bigger. And I like the fact that I can fit a little bit more items in there. But um, I will be going into the boutiques to try them on. And maybe it'll end up changing. But for now, I really like the large. And I like the age, uh, the age, 
the aged calfskin, my goodness. But as far as the hardware, that's the one where I'm having the hardest time deciding. But the reissue is just a beautiful bag. And since I'm a big fan of Chanel as it is, um, you know, and even though I should be adding more colors to my collection, I have found that when it comes to handbags, I really end up just going for neutral colors. Uh, when it comes to small leather goods, that's when I will really end up adding uh, pops of color just because I've had, I haven't had the best experience with um, colored bags. And if they don't end up working out when I go to sell them, it's really difficult to sell the colored bags because you have to find someone that's looking for that specific combination. Whereas a black bag or a brown bag, uh, you know, it's a little bit more universal. You know, more people will be, um, might be in the market for that particular, uh, you know, for that particular color. So who knows? But uh, the Chanel reissue, I think, is gorgeous. And plus the fact that it's it's very, very, it's simple. You know what I mean? It's simple, but it makes a huge statement. Uh, and since I, you know, I want to, I feel like that's the, the one item that I need to complete the Chanel collection. You know what I mean? I have the jumbo, the medium large, the mini rectangular, the wallet on chain, and things like that. But I feel that the reissue is just kind of like the last little puzzle piece, uh, you know, to, to my collection. So Number five, the Dior Wallet on Chain. I think that this is a beautiful bag. And uh, the main reason why this is on my wish list is not only because lately it seems that I've really been gravitating more towards uh, smaller handbags, at least within the last eight, nine, ten months. Uh, but what I particularly like about the Dior Wallet on Chain is the fact that the chain itself is removable. So if you are to use this as a clutch, you don't have to worry that you're going to be giving space to the chain inside, kind of like with the, with the Chanel Wallet on Chain. The Chanel Wallet on Chain is by far one of the best purchases I have ever done, I have ever made from the fashion house. But um, if you're going into something that small, you really want to be able to maximize your space. So the fact that you can just take off the chain completely, I think, is a major win. Plus, the price point that it has is fantastic for the quality that it has. Uh, now, it's not necessarily the color combination that I showed. Um, I'm actually thinking I might end up going for the black, kind of like what I just talked about with the colored handbags. Uh, but I also like a gray that they have a gray with the silver hardware um, I really like the combination that it has and just to be able to add a little variety to my collection uh, I might end up starting with a small uh, like a wallet or a card holder from Dior just to try out the fashion house first to see how I to see how uh, to see how it works out to see how the leather ends up wearing before I end up going for the wallet on chain uh, but uh, I have talked about Dior before I think that they have phenomenal customer service and every time I go in there they I mean they treat you like you're the only one, you know, on the planet. They really just take their time with you. They, I mean, they, they give you so much information about each item. So I already love the customer service that I get when I'm there. I already like, you know, the history behind some of the pieces that they have and the fact, like I said before, that they have amazing quality and the fact that this also has a great price point for a wallet on chain compared to the Chanel wallet on chain is a major, major plus. Uh, so who knows? I might go for the black. I might go for the gray. Uh, I have no idea. But again, the fact that you can remove that chain is just a total game changer, I think, when it comes to wallet on chain, <laughs> you know, because some of them are so narrow some of them are so small and you have to go like uber compact when you're going into them because of the chain if you want to use them as a clutch so uh, for sure I, I really am looking into to getting that soon the Celine Micro Luggage. A lot of you know that I'm a big fan of Celine. I have had two of their bags in my collection, the Phantom and the Mini Luggage, which is right here. Uh, and even though I'm a big fan of the Mini Luggage, I feel that it might be a little too big for my body frame. Uh, I love the quality that Celine has, and I, just the leather that they have is so incredibly beautiful. But I think that the Micro might end up being a little bit better for my body frame now. Uh, and I still like the fact that it ends up holding quite a bit. So I'm a big fan of the luggage, um, the luggage line in general. Uh, so I think going for a micro would be the best bet for me. Something that I might be able to use a little bit more often. Because like I said before, even though I do like this one, I don't use it as often as I would like. Uh, and I feel that it's probably because of the size. Uh, but I'm thinking about possibly going with the black with the silver hardware. Again, because I talked about colored handbags. Or I might end up going for the color in the picture, which is stone. And I believe it's with uh, the age or the antique uh, hardware. So I'm not too sure. I think both 
both of them are beautiful and I do like the drum leather that they have. I feel that it's very, very uh, carefree to, you know, I think it's carefree. I don't think it's one of those uh, types of leathers that is so, in, I mean, that's easy to scratch or anything like that. Uh, but I really like the size of the micro and uh, again, the fact that you can fit just as many items as you can in something like this without necessarily adding that much weight to it, I think would be perfect because I've mentioned this in other videos between the Phantom and the mini luggage, these beauties are definitely not lightweight. They are incredibly heavy on their own without anything inside of them. So if you end up putting your items inside or if you end up adding any extras, it makes for a very, very heavy handbag. So if I can maybe minimize the weight just a little bit by going for the micro, then I am all for that. <laughs> so the Celine uh, micro luggage. Number seven, the Louis Vuitton Keep All 45 Bandolier in the Monogram Eclipse. This is not new to my wish list. I think last time I had the 55, now I have the 45. I do currently have two Louis Vuitton Keep All 45s. I have one 55. Um, out of the two, I end up preferring the 45 only because I feel it's a little bit more user friendly. The 55 is great. You're able to fit a lot of items in there, but it can get a little heavy. And the 45, I just feel that it's even if you end up packing it to the brim, it's not as heavy, you know what I mean? And you can still end up fitting quite a bit in there. Um, sometimes I use it for three day weekends or four day weekends and I'm able to put just the items that I need in there without a problem. Uh, but going for the Monogram Eclipse, um, I just, I love, I absolutely love this print and I am hoping, I am hoping that someday Louis Vuitton listens to us and they say, hey, let's make a Neverfull or a Speedy in this print. How amazing would that be? Would that ever happen? Who knows, probably not from what my sales associates have said uh, because they you know it's just a it's just a men's uh, a men's line but I really like the way that it looks not only because um you know, it's it's very carefree. I don't have to worry about vaquetta. I don't have to worry about patina, water stains, or anything like that. And when it comes to luggage pieces, in particular, I feel that even though I'm a big fan of monogram, you know, and I like the, the natural process of patina, and I like it, you know, oxidizing and showing that beautiful honey golden color, but at the same time, when it comes to luggage pieces, I don't want to necessarily see so much wear and tear. And because of how you end up using those types of items, I feel that it's kind of inevitable to get that type of wear, to get the water stains to get the scuff marks so I feel that by going with the monogram eclipse it will end up camouflaging the wear a little bit better and I, I mean it's I'm just a big fan of the print in general and I do have the pochette voyage in the monogram eclipse and I just think it's beautiful right am I crazy it has this beautiful uh, black leather that's incredibly soft it does have the gunmetal hardware that you can see there uh, so I don't know I'm, I'm a big fan um, I tried it on when we were in London and I almost I almost ended up getting it but thankfully I didn't because I wouldn't have I mean I had nowhere to put it in my luggage I mean I could have used it you know, to come home. Uh, but I had, I just had way too much, <laughs> I had way too much going on. Uh, but I just, I really like it. I love the size. And like I said, I do like the 55, but I feel that it's a little too heavy. And uh, if I end up going on those three day weekends, the 45 is just a little bit easier to be able to manage, uh, especially when you're going through, through airports or anything like that. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't want to lug around this big piece of luggage or anything like that. Number eight, the St. Laurent Monogram Chain Wallet. Now this is where it gets kind of crazy because I have been talking about the fact that I end up going for more neutral colors. I prefer the black. I prefer uh, just, you know, a gray or something that's not as bright when it comes to handbags just because of what I've experienced in the past. But when it comes to this particular bag, when it comes to this particular uh, type of leather, I just absolutely love the red with the gold hardware. I think the combination is gorgeous. It's incredibly just vibrant vibrant and I think that it makes for you know it makes for a really interesting piece in any collection especially if you're the type of person like me that ends up going for only neutrals so if I add a pop of red by going for something like this I think it's perfect because it's not too large of a bag you know what I mean it's just the perfect size I don't feel that it's too obnoxious and again the fact that it has just that beautiful pop of color is great uh, now what I'm particularly fond of when it comes to Saint Laurent is their pebbled leather I think their pebbled leather is by far one of the best leathers out there from a fashion house I think that it's better I think it's better than the Chanel caviar leather and I'm a big fan of caviar leather but when it comes to this particular pebble leather here is my card holder I believe I got this about a year ago I think it's closer to a year maybe just a tad past a year and um, this is the uh, black 
grain pebbled leather with a silver hardware card holder and this thing has held up incredibly well I have used it to death and I can tell you right now it looks like the day that I got it there are no scratch marks there are no wear marks nothing there's nothing going on with the varnish no loose threads or anything like that the only way that you can tell that I've had it a little bit longer is the fact that there are a few hairline scratches on the hardware but that's gonna happen with any item that you use especially with a little wallet like this that you end up interacting with so much uh, so like I said before I'm a big fan of their leather and I, I don't know there's just something about it the only thing that holds me back from actually going for this bag uh, that's why it's still on my wish list is because whenever I have tried it on whenever I've gone into the boutique to see how much every you know how everything fits uh, I'll be honest with you when I first got this uh, and I will get into what I was talking about in just a second when I first got this it was incredibly um, it seemed like it was a little stiff to begin with it was very hard for me to retrieve the credit cards out of here just because of the type of leather so when I went to the boutique to try on the chain wallet I felt that it was kind of the same thing it was a very stiff leather so I don't know if I mean it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because it is durable but I don't know if it'll be just too uncomfortable as I end up using it you know what if I end up wanting to put a little bit more in there I don't feel that I'll be able to play with it as much as far as being able to fit my items inside uh, so it's a little restricting in that sense but I still absolutely love it and um, I mean there have been times when I just walked buy it and I see the red just kind of hanging there and my eye just kind of goes duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I am just in love with that bag so they like I said they do have a great price point they have amazing quality so I think I might just end up going for it unless I can find one on the pre-love market um and I think, you know, kind of like what I talked about with the Chanel reissue, because of, you know, uh, resale value when it comes to leather ha uh, to leather handbag, to colored handbags, my goodness, I might end up going the, the pre-love market for that. So that way I'm not losing that much money if I decide to sell it in the future. Number nine, the reason why there's no picture is because I'm waiting to see what color combinations come out, but I would love to add another Chanel Deauville tote. And this is in the large size, a 30 centimeter. And I feel like this video full of contradictions. I talk about wanting neutral bags and I go for a colored bag with Saint Laurent. But with this bag, you know, even though I talk about wanting uh, structured bags, that's something that I always go for. Structured bags, classic bags. There is something about this tote that, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's very, very casual. It's very, very my style. Who knows? Uh, but I just grin like, like an idiot from ear to ear every time I use it. I think it is one of the best totes that I have. Uh, and I just, I don't know. I like just the I mean the fact that it's simple the fact that it's casual and then you have this really nice chain detail to it uh, so I'm wondering what other colors are going to introduce you know probably within the next couple of months or within the next couple of years or weeks uh, but I'm hoping that they have either um, you know black with white that would be awesome because I do like the whole black and white even though this is definitely a neutral uh, but I just want to see what other colors they have maybe they'll have a red like a bright bright red who knows you know like I said I'm full of contradictions because I think that I would go for a red one because of the material that it is it's not necessarily it's not leather so uh, and it's lightweight so I can end up going that route I don't know but uh, I've seen a lot of people have different um, you know different Deauvilles in their collections and uh, I've had I've talked to a few of you guys and some of you say that once you get started with one you kind of want to <laughs> add more and more to your collection just because I feel that they're so incredibly easy to use and the fact that you can open it up and see everything at a glance is awesome and I particularly like this style because you can either use it uh, as a hand carry bag you can put it on the crook of your arm or you can put it on your shoulder which makes for a really great travel bag as well so another Chanel Deauville tote is definitely something that I I am keeping open I'm keeping that slot open <laughs> for it to just kind of work its way in whenever I do see them Number 10, the Mark Cross Overnight Case. Some of you might not be familiar with this brand. Uh, Mark Cross has been around since 1845, if I'm not mistaken, and it was dubbed America's first luxury brand. But the main reason why this particular item is on my wish list is because it's, you know, I, I consider myself to be an old soul. I often talk about the fact that I end up preferring old movies, black and white movies, movies from Alfred Hitchcock, who is one of my all-time favorite directors. And he made a movie called Rear Window. In that movie, Grace Kelly used the 
this particular overnight case uh, and she had I mean she had slippers she had a robe in there it was just great so I love the fact that it is an exact replica of the one that Grace Kelly used in that movie because like I said it is the same brand uh, but Mark Cross in general just has an amazing I mean amazing quality when it comes to leather whether it's uh, backpacks for men whether it's uh, some of the handbags that uh, they have for women as well they have so many different um, so many different uh, types of silhouettes to choose from so not only am I a big fan of the history behind the brand but I also love the silhouette I think it's a great design you know not too many bells and whistles very sleek very simple and it also fits quite a bit in there as well uh, but every single time that I walk by you know Saks Fifth Avenue the department store and I see Mark Cross I see the little section that they have I'm always in awe by the quality and the silhouettes of their handbags and like I said before they also have a men's collection so if you want something a little different maybe not something that uh, is so common make sure and check out Mark Cross uh, but the price points on their handbags is a little it's a little crazy <laughs> it's a little crazy but uh, that's why it's on the wish list because I don't know if it'll if I'll end up adding it to my collection only time will tell but it's one of those items that every single time I see it my heart just sings like none other it's crazy you know and uh, Robert's like then go ahead and go for it you know you're always talking about it you know, you're a big fan of the movie you love um, I mean you when I first saw the movie I remember remember just paying attention to what she was carrying and I was just like what what is that what is that you know it was like the the bag uh fanatic the handbag addict in me was like what is she carrying you know and it kind of started from there uh but it is absolutely amazing so the mark cross overnight case all right you guys so that does it for my updated top 10 luxury wish list items i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure and give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and you would like to please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when i upload videos which is anywhere from two to three times a week and uh, like I said throughout the video only time will tell if I end up adding these items to my collection uh, that's what I love about wish list that you can add you can add you can take away as many items as you'd like and then uh, while I'm in the process of doing research sometimes they end up going forward sometimes they end up falling off who knows uh, but I love I love the fact that it's almost like you have a no limit when it comes to a wish list you can add anything you want on there there are no rules when it comes to wish list you know what I mean uh, but uh, I know for a fact that it'll be quite some time before I add that Rolex just because I really do have to uh, I really do have to save up for it but I want it to be a special special item for a big birthday and um, I know that one of the items that I will be taking off the wish list very soon are those Valentino pumps because <laughs> because hopefully this is the last time I talk about them without having them in my collection you know what I mean <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching uh, and I will see you all later and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours have a great day you guys